Hey guys, it's come find me time and wow look, I'm in a different location. Yes I am, I'm down in Napier at my cousin's house and I was going to record outside in the gardens but the weather is atrociously bad. So, I'm inside, there you go. Um, lovely plain wall, wardrobe as a background, but that's okay, we're good, we're going to do this. So this week we're in Matthew 15-17 to and then Mark 7-9 to and it's entitled Thou Art the Christ. Which is a really great answer that Peter gave, and we'll get into that and sort of look deeper into that this week. Um, it's been a wonderful weekend. It's Easter weekend that I'm recording this, and last weekend was conference. Who loved conference? And if you haven't seen it yet, there's so much good stuff, and we're really looking forward to unpacking that and studying it for the next six months, and, and so much to gain and learn from that. Um, yeah, I've also got a like a, uh, I've been asked to teach a workshop at um, a steak event too. So I'm going to actually base that off one of this week's insights because I think that really just builds, it's around like um, spiritual uh, preparedness, readiness and self-sufficiency, which is I have already said like spiritual self-sufficiency or true self-sufficiency is God-sufficient or God-reliant. Like, if you're going to be self-reliant, it's God-reliant. So I'm going to base it off that. So that's basically my news and where I'm at. Uh, but we really enjoyed conference, and I'm still buzzing about Emily um, as young woman's president. That's so cool. And, yeah, I, I felt at the beginning of the year, I think if you remember, I said I think this year is going to be full of lots of big changes, and there's going to be some really hard things for pretty much everybody. But the blessings that are going to be available will equal or actually over power the hard um, but it is about finding them and focusing on Christ which is what we were talking about in the last couple of weeks I had a break last week because of Easter but it's the theme that I'm going to continue with because I think it's just I feel deeply spiritually about that 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 is what we're going to need everyone's going to have really hard times uh, for whatever reason and they're going to look different and the overcoming of that is the focus on Christ so let's get into it we're going to start in Matthew 16 13 to 15 so this is the who say you that I am um, now this comes after and you'll read this in both Matthew and Mark this week um, this is the, the same things kind of happen in both but I am going to focus in different places for both and sort of jump around because of the way it's written so sort of teaches the principle better in my opinion but read both please read both I read both I like both but the points I'm trying to make just sit better with what I'm going to direct you to so Jesus is warning in, in chapter 16 of Matthew here the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and what it does about, you know, it has all these rules. Remember, they had all these rules and they had to do this, each different thing. And um, it, it was just, this is the incident where they hadn't actually bought any bread. They, they He teaches them about this and then they... Um, get to the other side of the disciples get into the boat we talked about last week a little bit um, covered that and then they get there and they're like oh, we don't have any bread they're talking about like we don't have any bread and this is just after they've seen miracles of great epic proportions and they're worried about we forgot the bread and that's why Jesus said to them oh ye of little faith now when he says oh ye of little faith he's not criticizing um, it's it's a way that he's saying Guys, come on, remember what you just saw. Remember, remember that I, I can make bread happen. We just fed 5,000 plus and then we fed 4,000 plus and you're worried that we don't have enough bread for 12 of us or 13 of us, if you include him. Of course, he wants to eat too. And that it's okay. And that actually, and he reminds them of this and um, through nine through sort of 12 talks about that. And um, he just, he's like, you know, beware, beware of that. And then he's like thinking, he, can, he it starts off again, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi. So this is where people have constantly followed him around. And people are saying that he's this thing, or he's that thing, or he's something else. So he says to his disciples, his apostles, uh, in verse 13, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Question. And they all answered, and they said, well, you know, because he's like asking, like, what's what's the word on the street? What's the people saying who I am? Like, you've been out there, you've been listening to them, because at this point he's teaching them to go and 
teach and preach for themselves and to heal people and give people blessings. It's about delegating the work that needs doing, right? It's the same principle today. The prophet cannot literally visit each one of us and give us a priest a blessing. So this is what he's teaching them to do. Go out and minister to the people just like our Quorum of the Twelve, First Presidency and other leaders do today. They go out and they minister to the people and it flows down. There's a structural organisation which we're very grateful for. Um, it's clear and it is the same worldwide. There's no ambiguity in there and I really love that. So he asked them, what's the word on the street? What are people saying? And they're like, well, some say that you're John the Baptist because some had never met John the Baptist. They didn't have photos then. So some say that you're him and they, they think you're the same person. Um, some say Elias, like, you know, maybe you're the prophet that was supposed to come or maybe because an, an Elias is like a forerunner. So John the Baptist was an Elias. It also means uh, like a portent or a, the, the the person who prepares the way if you will but there was also a prophet called Elias um so don't get those two confused but that, that can mean the same thing some people were thinking that um and others like Jeremiah saw one of the prophets as he's saying and then he says to them in 15 he saith unto them but who say ye that I am and without hesitation Peter Simon Peter he says Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thou art the Christ. He knew. And then Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah. That's Simon, son of Jonah. Remember, he renamed him Peter, but his name was Simon. His given name was Simon. He renamed him Peter. And that's as we know him now. We call him Peter. Um, which means rock, solid. And we'll get into why that is. Um, yeah, blessed art thou, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And that's what's really cool is that Peter's testimony wasn't based on what he had, like it, it is, started off probably on what he saw and heard, but he had developed that relationship to a point where it was no longer based on other people's opinions, it was based on his relationship with Christ and with Heavenly Father. So, the Pharisees and Sadducees had demanded a sign from Jesus and teaching his apostles the meaning of expect miracles, he asked what people are saying about who he is. So this is, yeah, Jesus is teaching here, expect the miracles because, you know, here we are saying we don't have bread, we forgot the bread. And yet, look what you just witnessed as far as miracles go. Don't worry about it. We got it, right? Expect miracles. Expect to see them. And there are other people this week we'll talk about who expect miracles. And they get them because they come with that. We know you can do it. And I talked a lot about this last year when we were selling our house and buying a new one. I knew it was going to happen. I had no idea how or when, but I knew it was going to. So I prepared as best I could and then we were ready to have it happen. It's only been a year since we bought it. But a new house. But <clears throat> there were so many doubters around me and I, I was just like, no, no, no. I'm expecting miracles and I know my God. He told me it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And people are trying to tell me all sorts of things. Like professionals in the in the system are trying to tell me this is not going to happen. You don't have the incomes, you don't have the money, you don't have this. You know, there's your expectations are, are too much for the market and blah, 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 blah. You know, all the stuff they tell you. And I'm like, you know, I wish I could introduce you to my God. I, I know it's going to happen. And it did. And it's been fantastic and there's been no hiccups. It's been great. So... That's what he's trying to teach them there. Expect miracles. So he asks people what they're saying about, they give several answers, but then Peter, as I said, replies, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. So Peter, strong and solid foundation, is acknowledged by Christ. His testimony is not earthbound, mortal or fleeting. Peter knows this fact from his relationship with Heavenly Father. Peter is the rock to build on. So when we talk about build on the rock of our Redeemer, yes, Absolutely, that is a different thing, but the rock of our Redeemer is Peter, got it? So if you're going to build on the rock that is solid, Peter is the head of Christ Church on the earth at that time. Right now it's President Russell M. Nelson, he is the head of the church. So it's building on the rock that is the prophet, but if you go into a deeper meaning, Peter isn't like the charge of all those like representatives as you will um, of Christ on the earth and Christ is trying to get him to be the person he knows he can be and that he's able to be to be able to do this so he is the rock to build on that is the rock 
of Jesus Christ um, is Peter. And you're like, what? This is news to me. And, and maybe it is. And if you're not quite understanding, drop comments. Let's discuss. But that's what he's saying. So, yes, we do build on the rock of our Redeemer, as Helaman 5.12 teaches us. Remember, my sons, remember to build upon the rock that is our Redeemer. And yes, that is. But it's also Peter. So we had to learn a lot from Peter and really acknowledge that. Um, he is the solid that we need in the hard times. His example of how he was is so humanly, like, we can relate to it so well. Um, and he focused on Christ. He knew what that was. I remember that when he, like, wanted, he had great faith. He wanted to walk on water and he did. And then he stumbled. And we do that. There's so many things that he does that we do. Um, and I love the man. I really do. I I would say I'd like to meet him one day. I probably already have. And just don't remember it because it was pre-earth. Or maybe I've encountered him in some other way, shape or form. But yeah, really cool. So there you go. Um, the quote I'm going to use for this because we're already way over. Um, I'm trying to keep them short. But there's just so much good stuff this year. So... Uh, Alden Eli Maxwell in his life, and I love what he says, he's a very much a believer in Christ having gone through so much physical trial. Um, to be able to be that strong at the end of it was a great example to me, um, even before I got as sick as I am. So I really looked at Alden Maxwell's words a lot on his faith-based things, um, because he's just been that example. So he said, and this is kind of famous as it will, he said, if in the end you have not chosen Jesus Christ, it will not matter what you have chosen. Now, it's interesting to say he doesn't say no matter who you've chosen. He says what? Because it's not just who. It's like maybe you chose the things of the world. Maybe you chose different, like maybe you chose your car. Maybe you chose to follow someone else. Or maybe it was a thing that you decided. Maybe you wanted to live worldly and do that. But yeah, in the end, if you have not chosen Jesus Christ, then it's not going to matter who you chose. Like Christ is the only one. Um, he is the son of the living God. He is Christ. He is, Jesus is the Christ. Um, yeah, so powerful testimony of that that I would absolutely 100% give you. I know that he is on this Good Friday. And I don't want to cry so early on. But, and there's a little post I want to do that I'll do later today, which you'll see way before you see these because these drop next week. He definitely is. I absolutely know him to be that. And if you don't know that yet, pray for that, please. That's all I ask of you this Easter weekend. Pray for that. If you don't know, pray for that. Okay, that's the end of the first one. Who say you that I am? Are you going to listen to the world? Or are you going to listen to Heavenly Father and your testimony? He is the Son of the living God. Thou art Christ. All right. Hang around for the second one. We're going to hop over Mark. I'll see you there.